we'll make a comparison uh, first to chronic discoid lupus erythematosus. Clinically, it is discoid erythematous plaque with adherent scales, atrophy, and telangiectasia with scarring, which is thin, atrophic, non contracted, and healthy. Stippled leukodermic. It is well defined and uh, there is a rim of hyperpigmentation. Its scarring is thin, atrophic, non contracted, healthy, stippled, and leukodermic, different than the lupus vulgaris, which is thick, disfiguring, contractile, and unhealthy. Site, it occurs in uh, the sun-exposed areas, face sun-exposed areas as the cheeks, butterfly areas, nose and cheeks, ears, and V-shaped of the neck. And uh, also uh, when it happens in the scalp, it leads to cicatricial alopecia. Exist, uh, predisposing factors, trauma, infection, stress, sunburn, drugs as griseovolfin, and excitatory factor as sunburn, uh, sunlight, uh, cold, premenstrual, vitiligo. It's a precancerous condition uh, predisposing to basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. As we said, the discoid lupus erythematosus is only cutaneous with a 2 to 1 uh, ma female to male ratio. The second type is subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, which has mild systemic disease. It is 3 to 1, female to male ratio. It is annular psoriasiform lesions in the upper half of the body. Psoriasiform annular lesions with photosensitivity. It has mild systemic involvement as some arthritis. There is no renal involvement. Annular psoriasiform lesions in the upper half of the body with mild systemic symptoms as arthritis, no renal involvement. The third type, acute cutaneous lupus erythematosus, it is mild, uh, it is a systemic disease with female to male ratio of 8 to 1. There is two types, cutaneous and systemic. Of course, there is systemic affection. The cutaneous or skin affection and uh, the multi-system disease joints, CVS, CNS, kidney, reticular endothelial system, and bone marrow. The cutaneous disease, there is specific and non-specific. Specific means that it shows the following uh, uh, or the, the histological, the histopathological features of uh, LE. This is the non-specific cutaneous lesions of uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. Four, photosensitivity, malar erythema, discoid lupus erythematosus, and bullous lesions. What about the non-specific cutaneous lesions? Skin, urticaria, vasculites, erythema multiforme, levido reticularis, palmar erythema, infarction, renos phenomena, and the hair, either diffuse hair loss or frontal hair loss, loss or cicatricial like discoid lupus erythematosus and also mucous membrane affection. The skin specific lesions as the photosensitivity which is in the butterfly area, dorsum of the hands and v-shaped area of the chest and the molar erythema of course as we can see in the picture here there is slight edema and erythema which is well demarcated. About the, uh, there is also uh, the, some of the non-specific, uh, which is palmar erythema, we can see here, in this picture, the palmar erythema, which is non-specific. The hair either 50% diffuse or frontal affection of the hair loss, or it can be cicatricial, like this picture in the uh, as discoid lupus erythematosus lesions in this picture. What about the criteria of uh, diagnosis? The RRA criteria are 11, four of them are skin. Photosensitivity, malar erythema, discoid lupus erythematosus lesions, and oral lesions this time. If we find oral lesions. Photosensitivity, malar erythema, discoid lupus erythematosus, oral lesions. Three systemic, arthritis, CVS, pleurisy pericarditis, 
psychosis and scissors. Tahalil, pancytopenia, protein more than 3 grams, albumin and uh, costs in urine. Serology, 2, ANA and one of these anti-native DNA, anti-Smith or anti raw anti-law, positive STS like VDRL, etc. For the diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus, we should have four criteria simultaneous or in succession. I want to give a note that the uh, connective tissue diseases, including LE, dermatomyocytes, scleroderma, mixed connective tissue diseases, they contain skin manifestations and plus internal organ systemic affection and diagnostic serology. And as we can see here, the diagnosis is usually with biopsy, with direct immunofluorescence, serology, and others. Okay. Now we will start again in the uh, diagnosis of uh, LE, the three types, comparison. First, diagnosis includes histopathology, direct immunofluorescence, and serology. The histopathology of first discoid lupus erythematosus, which is actually, they are all the same, discoid and subacute lupus and systemic lupus, they are all the same histopathology. There is hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis with follicular plugging. And there is thin epiderms with effacement of reti ridges, and there is hydropic liquefactive degeneration of the basal keratinocytes leading to apoptosis, and uh, there is melanophages in the derms and patchy lymphocytic infiltration, perivascular and periappendageal at the hair follicles and the glands. Also, there is uh, the PAS stain. There is a thick basement membrane zone. Hyperkeratosis, parakeratosis, thin epiderms, effacement of reti ridges, hydropic liquefactive degeneration of basal keratinocytes, apoptosis, melanophages in the derms, patchy lymphocytic infiltration, perivascular and periappendageal with the hair follicles and the glands. Of course, there is uh, uh, with follicular plugging in the hyperkeratosis and parakeratosis. This, that causes the uh, adherence scales clinically. There is two differential diagnoses here. Uh, histopathologically, the patchy lymphocytic infiltration, which is perivascular and periappendageal, discoid lupus erythematosus, polymorphous light eruption, pseudo lymphoma, lymphocytic, uh, lymphocytic infiltration of Gessner and lymphocytoma cutis, and true lymphoma, lymphocytic lymphoma. There is another differential diagnosis of apoptosis, dropping of pigment in the derms. Discoid lupus erythematosus, dermatomyocytes, lichen planus, fixed drug eruption. I want to give a hint of there is another clinical type of discoid lupus erythematosus. This is a note, like papular disseminated LE profundus and Raoul syndrome, erythema multiforme lesions uh, uh, with uh, the LE, the histopathological features of LE. We can see here, clinically, this is the LE profundus, and this is also a another uh, LE panicolites. This is another, another thing upwards. This is the LE profundus, now LE tumidus. Now coming back after the histopathology, we can diagnose with direct immunofluorescence. The direct immunofluorescence lupus band test. Immunoglobulin G and complement 3 deposition in dermoepidermal junction. This is only in positive in the skin lesions. This is the same in the uh, uh, also the uh, subacute lupus erythematosus type. It is positive. And about the systemic lupus, it is positive in the lesion, but in the non lesional, it is positive in the uh, sun exposed areas. But if it is positive in the non-sun exposed areas, this means poor prognosis. So first, we did the diagnosis first with histopathology, with the direct immunofluorescence lupus band test. We can see here a picture of that. And also there is 
the uh, serology. As a quick comparison, the discoid lupus erythematosus serology is negative, negative serology. Subacute lupus, lupus erythematosus, anti rho, anti la, and for the systemic lupus, ANA positive. Now, for the details, the discoid lupus erythematosus serology, as we said, negative serology, ANA negative, anti native negative. Subacute lupus erythematosus, anti rho, anti la positive in 80%. But the ANA is positive in 30%, anti-native is negative, and negative anti-Smith, negative ribonucleoprotein. There is a comment on the anti rho anti law positive positivity. This happens also in ANA negative systemic lupus, in neonatal systemic lupus erythematosus, late onset systemic lupus erythematosus, Jogren syndrome, C2 deficiency, LE. Of course, there is a question about neonatal. All cutaneous lesions resolve except the heart block. Now, the systemic lupus erythematosus serology, it is positive ANA as we can see. Positive serology, titr and pattern, systemic lupus titr uh, as we can see, peripheral and homogeneous for diagnosis and prognosis. The ANA positive, which is non specific, but the anti native DNA positive is. Diagnostic. There is two types: single-stranded DNA, which is positive but not specific, and the uh, double-stranded, anti-double-stranded DNA, which is positive and diagnostic. There is another types could be positive as anti rho anti law as uh, we said, subacute lupus and other variants of LE, and there is another types. Antihistone antibodies in drug LE, anti Smith antibodies positive, and anti ribonucleoprotein resistant. If it is sensitive, is anti ribonucleoprotein sensitive? This makes, means that there is mixed connective tissue disease. The serology negative in discoid lupus erythematosus, anti rho anti law in subacute lupus erythematosus, and NA in 30% positive and about systemic lupus erythematosus, ANA positive, but it is not specific, and there is uh, anti-native DNA positive, and especially double-stranded DNA, which is uh, diagnostic and specific. There is another types of systemic lupus, anti uh, and anti law positive, anti-histone for drug LE, anti-Smith positive, and anti ribonucleoprotein uh, resistant, but it is sensitive in mixed connective tissue diseases. There is another also investigations could be done in systemic lupus erythematosus, which is chest X-ray, CBC, which shows anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and lymphocytopenia. There is another things like increased serum globulin, more than three gram per day and positive Coombs test, false positive test for syphilis. Even the CBC is anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, lymphocytopenia, with increased erythrocyte sedimentation rates, urine, albumin, and costs. Complement, which is a cheap test, complement decreased C3 and C4, B2 microglobin, and there is something called LE cell test. It is 80% positive. They are polymorph nuclear leukocytes, ingested basophilic material from degenerated white cells. Other investigations, chest x-ray, CBC, erythrocyte sedimentation rate increase, highly increase actually, and the urine albumin cost, complement C3, C4 decreased, B2 microglobulin globulin decreased, and LE cell test 80%. There is a note about the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, if it is more than 100, this indicates either TB, connective tissue diseases, like systemic lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, etc., and sarcoidosis also, and malignancy. Keep it in mind. Before I go from the diagnosis, I want to uh, add something that I forget about the histopathology. There is also, this is the uh, mucin 
the Rupus Erythema Tusa Collodial Iron Stain for Muse. Anyway, now there is a comment also I want to say that there is the profiles, the very important, the profile, six profiles in connective tissue diseases. There is uh, A, the systemic lupus erythematosus, positive native DNA, and Smith, and uh, the mixed connective tissue disease ribonucleoprotein, subacute and neonatal LE, this is anti rho anti la, and there is the um, Crest syndrome, uh, uh, this is, or, or uh, acrosclerosis, this is. Uh, the uh, anti-centromere antibody and also the diffuse cutaneous uh, systemic scleroderma, this is anti-scleroderma 70, and for the drug uh, systemic lupus, drug-induced systemic lupus, antihistone antibodies. Yeah, for systemic lupus, native DNA and anti-Smith. For the subacute and neonatal LE, we have anti rho anti la And for the mixed connective tissue disease, ribonucleoproteins. For the scleroderma, systemic scleroderma, there is the uh, localized Crest syndrome, anti-centromere antibody, and for the diffuse cutaneous systemic scleroderma, there is the uh, scleroderma 70. And for the drugs, finally, uh, drug-induced uh, stem lupus, the antihistone antibody. Now for the treatment. For the treatment, there is, uh, for the treatment of discoid lupus erythematosus, usually we use sunscreens, steroids, topical or intralesional, and anti-malarial. Okay. The uh, anti-malarial, oral anti-malarials, they are both immune modulators and systemic sunscreen. They are successful in controlling and clearing the lesion, but there is a very important note, fungal, uh, fungal irregular fundus examination for the field of vision. For prolonged uh, chloroquine treatment, we should you, uh, do regular fundus examination and field of vision. Now there is for the uh, for the systemic lupus erythematosus, the symptomatic treatment, and the uh, for bed rest in acute cases uh, doesn't expose to sun, and uh, here we use systemic steroid, antimalarial, and cytotoxic drugs as as a thioprin. Others like dapsone, plasmapheresis, intravenous immunoglobulins, and symptomatic treatment as aspirin, endomethacine for arthritis or di uh, dialysis for the renal disease. Okay, there is systemic steroids, 60 to 120 prednisolone uh, tablets, and uh, anti systemic antimalarials, uh, cytotoxic drugs as azathioprine and uh, imiran 100 to 150 milligram per day and plasma pharesis, intravenous immunoglobulins symptomatic treatments as aspirin endomethacin and arthritis for the prognosis of the uh, disease it is good in the localized form and it is poor in the systemic lupus erythematosus because 50% uh, death in 10 years and of course the renal uh, Failure and secondary infection and vasculites are the most causes of uh, death in this disease, which is worse in males, of course. There is theories for the etiology. This is a note. Theories for the etiology. It's not yet known. Other genetic fact of the of the systemic lupus or diary or discoid lupus erythematosus also, either just uh, genetic or immunological factors as an autoimmune disease or virus. There is predisposing factors like sun exposure and stress, drugs as uh, resiofolvent, tetracycline, contraceptive pills, and hydralazine, uh, sulfonamides, sulfonamides, and also there is diseases as bacterial infections like TB and uh, others. This is the uh, LE. Now we will start the second connective tissue disease, which is the dermatomyocytes. Dermatomyocytes will talk about the definition, classifications, clinical picture, and uh, diagnosis, and changes, including clinical picture and management. It is an uh, 
the definition it is rare inflammatory myopathy with the characteristic skin manifestations and or muscle weakness the dermatomyocytes uh, age in the middle age or late childhood and the females usually two to one percent and uh, the classification of dermatomyocytes includes three types. We said that it is inflammatory myopathy with characteristic skin manifestation and muscle biopsy. So the classification depends on the skin and muscle. There are three types. Dermatomyocytes, which contains skin and skeletal uh, involvement. There are three types. Adulthood, childhood, or juvenile dermatomyocytes and malignancy associated and with other connective tissue diseases. We'll talk about that later. Now the dermatomyocytes, which is skin and muscle, adulthood, childhood, malignancy associated with other connective tissue diseases. Another type is dermatomyocytes without myocytes, which is thin myocytes, dermatomyocytes, so myocytes. The third is the polymyocytes, which is only skeletal muscle affection without any uh, skin manifestations. This is the classification of dermatomyocytes. What about the diagnostic criteria? The diagnostic criteria now includes four things, which is enzymes, electromyogram, muscle biopsy, and skin manifestations. The diagnosis is definite when we call, when there is four criteria, including number four, which is the skin, and probable, which is three criteria, including number four, the skin, and possible, two criteria, including number four, which is the skin. Definite, probable, and possible. The criteria are enzymes, elevated enzymes, serology, CPK, aldolase, GOT, and SCAPT, and LDH, and electromyogram shows myocytes and muscle biopsy which shows degeneration and skin manifestations. These are the diagnostic criteria of the uh, dermatomyocytes. Enzymes, electromyogram, muscle biopsy and skin manifestations definite, probable and possible. Now we'll talk about the clinical picture. The clinical picture includes three points, skin, muscle, and systemic. The skin, muscle, and systemic. Skin including Gotrin signs, Gotrin's papules, and periangual telangiectasia, calcinosis, heliotrope erythema, and polyculoderma. The muscles, muscle pain, weakness, and atrophy, especially in the proximal muscle of shoulders and peri and uh, girdle uh, muscles, and the systemic manifestations, which are very uh, uncommon here, as the cardiac GIT, arthralgia, and pulmonary. In details, the skin manifestations clinically. Two pathognomonic or diagnostic signs, which are Gotrin signs and Gotrin's papules. The Gotrin signs, the Gotrin papules are papules, violaceous, flat-topped violaceous papules on the dorsal interphalangeal joints and metacarpophalangeal joints. They are violaceous papules, flat-topped violaceous papules in the dorsal interphalangeal joints and the metacarpophalangeal joints. While the Gutrin sign is a violaceous erythema in the same places in the dorsal interphalangeal joints and metacarpophalangeal joints and also in the elbow and knees. These are the only pathogenic or pathognomonic signs or diagnostic signs in 70% of cases in the skin manifestations. What about the non-specific signs? The non-specific signs include the periangle telangiectasia, ragged cuticle, and the heliotrope, erythema, and poikiloderma atrophicans, vascular, and calcinosis. First, the periangle telangiectasia, ragged cuticle. We'll talk about the heliotrope erythema. It's also a, in 36%, it's a violaceous erythema. Late, it becomes poikilodermatous. The site in the face, and especially periorbital, the chest, and 
in the V-shaped area of the chest and the arms. Also, pupil derma atrophicans vascular. It is mottled pigmentation with atrophy and telangiectasia. Usually, it's in the, the shoulders, arm, upper back, shawl distribu distribution. There's a note that there is the path or pecoderma atrophicans vascular usually comes in some of the genodermatoses, and this is, of course, uh, and also in uh, early in lymphoma and late in dermatomyocytes. Another thing is the calcinosis. The calcinosis, it is subcutaneous calcium deposits or plaques. If extensive, it becomes called dystrophic calcinosis universalis. And the calcium, you can see it by hematoxyl, and you've seen giving blue color, or vonkosa stain giving black color. This is a special stain for calcium. It is more common, the calcinosis is more common in dermatomyocytes, in childhood dermatomyocytes, and it's uh, also uh, more common in proximal muscles as shoulders and pelvic girdle. Other things, there is ulcers and levido. We will say the now the uh, clinical picture, the skin manifestations, as we can see here. Gutrin sign up, and Gutrin papules down, and periangulatal injectasia, rect cuticle. Here we can see it to the right is the heliotrope erythema around the eye and in the V-shaped area of the chest, and also there is the Poikiloderma atrophicans vascular, here we can see it. And also we can see the calcinosis, especially in children in the proximal distribution. Here we can see another picture of also heliotrope erythema, very evident. And here you can see the Gutrin sign and Gutrin's papules, ragged cuticle, pair angle to telangiectasia. This is the skin manifestations. Second thing is the muscle involvement. The muscle involvement, it's, it affects the proximal skeletal muscle, especially the shoulder and pelvic girdle. The shoulder like difficulty in combing one's hair and pelvic girdle as climbing stairs or get up, or get up of a chair. It is manifested by pain, weakness and atrophy. It's progressive and symmetrical. Also there is any uh, other systemic manifestations which is less common like uh, involvement of pharyngeal and neck flexors leading to dysphagia, involvement of diaphragm leading to respiratory failure, there is cardiac manifestations arrhythmias, congestive heart failure, myocarditis, GIT ulcers, dysphagia, esophageal dysmotility, arthralgia, which is less common, and pulmonary, like um, interstitial lung disease, especially in antisynthetase syndrome, which is myocytes and antisynthetase antibodies. This is the clinical picture, including the muscle, the, the skin manifestations, and the muscle, proximal muscle affection, and the other systemic involvement, which is rare. The investigations, investigations include also four things. Investigation skin, muscles, and look for association, and other things as serology blood, urine, and nail fall capillaroscopy. We start off the skin biopsy. Skin biopsy, we can see that there is, uh, it gives different clinical uh, uh, picture as early, there is flat epiderms, degeneration of basal keratinocytes, melanophages, and perivascular lymphocytic infiltration. Later, it is poikiloderma uh, atrophicans vascular-like. Here we can see the, clinic, the histopathology of the skin. Early flat epiderms, degeneration of basal keratinocytes, melanophages, perivascular and not periappendageal 
lymphocytic infiltrate and late it is like PAV. The direct immunofluorescence, immunoglobulin gene complement 3 and also immunoglobulin A, deposition in upper derms. This is the skin biopsy. Second thing is the muscle. Muscle biopsy, EMG and serology. Muscle biopsy showing degeneration and Electromyogram shows myocytes, not myopathy, myocytes. The serology very important. Elevated muscle enzymes as CPK, aldolase, scots gift and LDH. The most sensitive is CPK, creatine phosphate kinase muscle fraction. It's very sensitive. It's a good negative test, but not specific. It is once negative, it is negative. The aldolase is more specific, but it's not sensitive, so it is once it's positive, surely it is positive. It's a good positive test, the, the aldolase. Also, there is elevated squat and skip and uh, squat and ALT and LDH, lactate dehydrogenase. This is the muscle, investigations, biopsy, electromyogram, and serology. There is a, also another thing is to look for association, either associated connective tissue disease, we see the serology and or uh, associated malignancy, especially in the old age and adulthood. And if you don't find, we should look afterward for follow-up. may proceed, coincide, or start after dermatomyocytes. We'll talk about that later. Connective tissue uh, association and malignancy association. Investigations now. We are talking about skin manifestate biopsy. Muscle biopsy, EMG, and serology, and look for association. The other things are also another types of serology, autoantibodies. We have myocyte specific antibodies in third of patients, anti Me2 antibodies in dermatomyocytes, anti JO1, which is non specific, nor sensitive to dermatomyocytes and polymyocytes. Anti-KU, in case of mixed with other connective tissue disease as scleroderma, systemic scleroderma, and anti-ribonucleoprotein, like polymyocytes and systemic lupus or mixed connective tissue disease, it will be elevated. And there is also anti-polymyocytes scleroderma antibodies. It is uh, with dermatomyocytes or polymyocytes with scleroderma. This is the O2 antibodies, anti me 2 anti jo one anti-KU, anti-ribonucleoprotein, and uh, anti-polymyocytes -poly uh, scleroderma antibodies. Also, there is other things like elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, urine. We will make 24-hour urinary creatine. creatine. There is albuminuria and hematuria, and the nail fold capillaroscopy, the pattern of capillaries. These are the investigations for the, myo my the uh, my uh, dermatomyocytes. What about the treatment? The treatment is either there is physical treatment early in the disease, and there is the skin disease we will give only if there is mild skin disease, we give topical steroid sunscreens. And also, we will screen for malignancy associated or connective tissue diseases. There is also systemic steroids, prednisolone, 60 mg per day, 1 mg per kilogram per day, cytotoxic drugs as methotrexate or cyclosporin A, and also intravenous immunoglobulins, antimalarial drugs. Physical treatment. Topical steroid and sunscreen for skin disease. Systemic steroid cytotoxics like methotrexate, cyclosporin A, intravenous immunoglobulins, antimalarial drugs. Prognostic follow up CPK until normal or clinical improvement. Of course, it's poor prognosis. We have, uh, there is a question here. Uh, the myopathy, the myopathic weakness, it is from systemic steroid or from how we can differentiate or from the disease itself. We can make the uh, CPK, we will see CPK 
level if it is uh, uh, it will differentiate if it is still active dermatomyocytes or it's only a side effect of the systemic steroid this is the treatment of dermatomyocytes we will go back to uh, the types of the association look for association we will go back for this point now there are uh, juvenile dermatomyocytes and there is associations the juvenile we will talk about the juvenile dermatomyocytes in a point now it resembles uh, adults except that there is more calcification widespread vasculitis skin muscle and GIT and lower grade fever high uh, percentage of low grade fever more in polymyocytes uh, we have increased incidence of polymyocytes one antibodies the prognosis for the mother, it of course it exacerbates the, the lesion in 50% of cases if dermatomyositis comes in pregnancy and there is increased fetal loss, premature or stillbirth. Now look for associations, the associations either with malignancy, associations, paraneoplastic and 26% and there is association with connective tissue disease overlap syndrome. Malignancy associated usually in females ovarian tumors and in males stomach uh, and lymphoma cancers. Malignancy may proceed in 35% or after in 40% or together in 26%. Usually old than young, male than female and dermatomyocytes more than polymyocytes. All male with dermatomyocytes then is uh, highly uh, or more uh, than young female with polymyocytes. The dermatomyocytes with connective tissue disease overlap syndrome it could happen with mixed connective tissue disease, systemic lupus erythematosus, scleroderma, and Drogren's syndrome. And patients should fulfill the, fo the diagnostic criteria of both or two separate disorders. Here it is more with females than males and with polymyocytes than, my, than dermatomyocytes. An example is sclerodermatomyocytes. We can, we can see scleroderma, which is usually limited in the face and hands with the Raynaud's phenomena, and dermatomyocytes or polymyocytes. And there is systemic involvement, which is either arthritis, esophageal affection, or lung. And the investigations, we can see the rheumatoid factor increase and anti -poly, uh, polymyocytes scleroderma antibodies. This is the dermatomyocytes, the second connective tissue disease. The generalized uh, morphia also is another type, which is widespread lesions, uh, but without systemic involvement. The third connective tissue disease is uh, the scleroderma. The scleroderma is... This term is used to refer to both systemic sclerosis and cutaneous sclerosis, in which systemic disease rarely seen as morphia and linear scleroderma. So there is two types of scleroderma. There is localized cutaneous scleroderma or localized scleroderma. This is the morphia. And there is the systemic scleroderma in which there is uh, uh, two types, limited crest syndrome and systemic scleroderma. There is another type, uh, additional type, which is pseudoscleroderma. This type of scleroderma or pseudoscleroderma has negative serology and no systemic involvement. What's the meaning of pseudoscleroderma? This means that there is negative serology and there is no systemic involvement. Uh, we will talk about this one before we start the true scleroderma. There is a, a diseases or in, uh, environmental factors that may cause scleroderma-like changes. Diseases or environmental factors that may induce scleroderma-like changes. Uh, there's a note, Poems syndrome, one of these, polyneuropathy, organomegaly, liver, spleen, and lymph node, endocrinopathy, diabetes mellitus, and uh, monoclonal gammopathy, 
and pseudoscleroderma skin disorders which have pseudoscleroderma, hypertrichosis, and hyperpigmentation. We will talk about some of these types of pseudoscleroderma. Multiple types. There is genetic disorders like progeria, Rothman-Thompson syndrome, metabolic disorders, Poems syndrome, porphyria cutanea torda, phenylketonuria, and scleroderma, uh, scleroedema adulturum, and scleromyxedema. Also amyloidosis. These are the metabolic disorders with pseudoscleroderma. Paraneoplastic syndromes, like carcinoid syndrome and bronchial cancer, connective tissue disorders, dermatomyocytes, systemic lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic breast versus host syndrome, and acrodermatitis uh, chronica atrophicans. There is another call, a cause of pseudoscleroderma, which is occupational and chemical exposure, like examples uh, vinyl chloride, silicosis, pesticides, epoxy resin, etc. And there is iatrogenic also uh, causes of pseudoscleroderma, like isoniazides and others. Also silicon. These are the causes of scleroderma, the pseudoscleroderma, which are negative serology, no systemic involvement, uh, genetic, metabolic, paraneoplastic, connective tissue disorder, chronic breast versus host syndrome, and acrodermatitis chronic atrophicans, occupational, and iatrogenic. Now we will talk about the true scleroderma, the two types of scleroderma, the, the uh, cutaneous uh, or localized cutaneous sclerosis, localized scleroderma, and or morphia, and the systemic scleroderma. Localized scleroderma, it is localized sclerosis of subcutaneous tissue and occasionally underlying muscles. It is rare female to male ratio, 3 to 1. The age is from 20 to 40 years old. While the systemic, we can see here to the right, is uh, 3 to 1, also the female to male, uh, and it, uh, in the fourth decade, it happens in the fourth decade. So the localized sclerosis, or the localized scleroderma, female to male, 3 to 1, 20 years to 40 years peak, and uh, before we start, there is a note that there is some cases with localized scleroderma uh, related to Borrelia burgdorferi, Lyme disease, in endemic areas, or uh, if there is a history of tick bite, uh, we can make tests for antibodies to spirochetes, and if it's possible, uh, positive, we can give antibiotics. This is a special type of uh, morphia or, or localized scleroderma, caused by infectious cause of the Borrelia burgdorferi, in Lyme disease. What about the clinical variants of localized scleroderma. Clinical variants, plaque scleroderma, or plaque morphia, guttate morphia, linear morphia, generalized morphia and deep morphia, disabling pan-sclerotic morphia. The plaque morphia, it is round or oval plaque with indurated ivory smooth surface and lila border. Usually it lasts for three to five years and heal with residual pigmentation. You can see here, as this example, we can see the poorly defined plaque which has indurated ivory smooth surface and lila border. This is early, it's morphia. And here also we can see a, an example of the localized morphia which also has this plaque of, uh, with the ivory co color and uh, surrounded by violaceous lila border. And the diffuse, uh, the deep morphia, which is diffuse in duration of tissues, uh, it occurs in the deep germs, then subcutaneous tissue, fascia, and uh, also superficial muscles. It infiltrates. This hold the deep derms subcutaneous tissue extends to the fascia and subcutaneous muscles. This is the deep morphia. The last 
type of uh, morphia is disabling pansclerotic morphia of children. It's aggressive form, aggressive mutilating form, affecting all tissues up to the bone. Now, these clinical types are plaque morphia, guttate morphia, linear morphia, generalized deep morphia, and disabling pansclerotic morphia. The plaque morphia is round or oval plaque with lila border and indurated ivory smooth surface. The guttate morphia resembles lichen sclerosis atrophicus but without the hypertrophic or follicular plugging. And the linear morphia, which usually occurs in the extremities with calcinosis contractions, also spina bifida and frontal or frontal parietal region causing ecoti sabre, and which is a linear depressed groove in front of, uh, frontal parietal region or the, or the forehead extending to the scalp usually with linear alopecia. And there is a special type which is peri syndrome which is a progressive hemifacial atrophy. Also there is the generalized morphia which is widespread morphia and uh, but without any systemic involvement. The deep morphia is diffuse induration of tissues affecting or infiltrating the deep derms, subcutaneous tissue fascia, and superficial muscles. There is the disabling pansclerotic morphia of children, which is aggressive mutilating form of morphia affecting all tissues up to the bones. We will continue about the clinical picture of uh, morphia. The morphia early, it is inflammation, and there is, inf uh, the, the, there is inflammation in morphia early in the disease, giving the clinical picture of erythematous plague with sclerosis, which is shiny, tight, and loss of appendages, and violet or lila ring. Late, we can see that there is sclerosed or, or touch the sclerosed indurated and bound down to the underlying structures. We can see smooth and shiny and whitish appearance. So this uh, morphia, the localized morphia, early, there is the, the, uh, the at the inflammation stage, there is erythematous plaque, which, is, which has sclerosis, and uh, shiny tight with loss of appendages, and uh, with lila border. And late, there is sclerosed, indurated, bound down to the underlying structure with smooth, shiny, and whitish appearance. So the clinical variants include plaque morphia, which is, as we said, round or oval plaque uh, with indurated ivory smooth surface and lila border that lasts for three to five years uh, and for, with residual pale with residual pigmentation. The second type is guttate morphia, which resembles lichen sclerosis atrophicus, but without hypertrophic or follicular plugging. There's a third type of morphia, which is linear morphia, it happens either on the extremities or on frontal or frontal far parietal uh, region. Uh, when, it, when, when it occurs in extremities, it, there is usually calcinosis, contract contractions or contractures uh, of joints, and there is also sometimes spina bifida. There is a special type in frontal or frontal parietal uh, region. Uh, it's called incoup de sabre or ecoup de sabre. Uh, it occurs as a lineal depressed groove on the frontoparietal region, the forehead, and it extends to the scalp. When it extends to scalp, it makes a linear, uh, linear alopecia. Uh, there is a peri romberg syndrome, which is progressive hemifacial atrophy. The linear morphia is either on the extremities and usually associated with calcinosis, contractures, and there is also spina bifida, and also it happens in frontal or frontoparietal region with eco de sabre, which is a linear depressed groove on frontal uh, and frontoparietal region and in the forehead, and uh, it extends usually to the scalp with linear alopecia. There is a special type peri romberg syndrome, which is progressive hemifacial atrophy. As we can see in this picture, this is eco de sabre.
this comparison again about systemic scleroderma there is actually a diagram to make it easy we will talk about skin sclerosis telangiectasia Raynaud's phenomenon and there is ulceration and calcinosis and hyper or hypopigmentation also we will talk about the pink nail fold capillaroscopy and also the auto antibodies lastly we'll talk about the systemic manifestations about the skin manifestations first as we said there is the skin sclerosis then the telangiectasia Raynaud's phenomena and there is calcinosis ulceration hypo and hyperpigmentation so the skin sclerosis it is early the skin is edematous in edematous phase followed by the sclerotic phase late there is the atrophic phase which is sclerosed and durated with smooth, uh, smooth shiny appearance and bound down to the underlying structures first the skin sclerosis early it's edematous followed by sclerotic phase later it is atrophic phase which is sclerosed smooth shiny and bound down especially in the face and fingers and hands the face has small pinched nose and constricted mouth with radial furrows. For the fingers and hand, it is swollen, tumid, and cannot be fully extended. The same places we have telangiectasia of the face and, ha and hand, and there is Raynaud's phenomenon. Sometimes there is calcinosis on palmar aspect of terminal phalanges, and sometimes there is ulceration over the tips of. Uh, fingers and there is hypo or hyperpigmentation it's either dif uh, hypo and, and hyperpigmentation which is either diffuse or salt and pepper like there is a uh, perifollicular hyperpigmentation uh, against a hypopigmented background the second thing is nail fold capillary pattern they are abnormal as we said and the O2 antibodies the O2 antibodies in the uh, Crest syndrome it is uh, anti-centromere antibodies speckled pattern and in the uh, now we will uh, shift after the localized morphia into the systemic type the systemic scleroderma Clinically, we said first that the uh, female to male ratio is 3 to 1 and it is in the fourth decade. We will give a comparison first with the limited cutaneous scleroderma and the diffuse cutaneous scleroderma. The limited cutaneous scleroderma or the acro, uh, acrosclerosis regarding the first skin sclerosis, telangiectasia, Raynaud's phenomena and systemic affection and also the nail fold capillaroscopy with uh, O2 uh, antibodies and the prognosis first the uh, about skin sclerosis the acrocyanosis it is limited to the hands face and forearm the diffuse cutaneous scleroderma it is truncal and acral both truncal and acral the telangiectasia in the limited cutaneous scleroderma there is uh, the telangiectasia is disseminated and also there is calcinosis but the diff diffuse type it is without significant number. For the uh, Raynaud's phenomena, it is long-lasting in the acrosclerosis, and it is uh, in the diffuse type it is um, a, a short interval, about uh, within one year, from the uh, between the onset of the skin lesion and the Raynaud's uh, phenomena development. The systemic affection in the limited scleroderma is late onset, as only pulmonary hypertension. And uh, here in the diffuse type, there is uh, early involvement, systemic involvement, like uh, lung disease, renal failure, GIT, myocardial uh, affection. Regarding the nail fold uh, capillary, 
or colposcopy, there is dilatation and drop without dropouts in the limited type, and in the diffuse type, there is dilatation with uh, destruction. Regarding the O2 antibodies, there is ant uh, for the limited type, there is anti-centromere antibodies, very important, and scleroderma 70 in the, the diffuse type. The prognosis is good in the localized or limited uh, cutaneous scleroderma, and uh, the, uh, it is poor in the diffuse cutaneous scleroderma. So, the main differential diagnosis or the main differential differences about skin sclerosis, telangiectasia, Raynaud's phenomena, and systemic affection. The skin sclerosis is limited to the hands, face, and forearm, here truncal and acral. The telangiectasia here is disseminated with calcinosis here without significant number. The Raynaud's phenomena here is long-lasting, while here it is short, about one year. The systemic affection is late uh, in the limited type, usually pulmonary uh, hypertension, and uh, in the diffuse type, of course, it is early and uh, uh, like lung, renal failure, GIT, and myocardial affection. The nail fold capillary, there is dilatation without dropouts. Here, the other one is dilatation with destruction. Auto antibodies, here, anti centromere antibodies, and here, scleroderma 70. The prognosis is good, the prognosis here is poor. We'll talk also about another hint about the Crest syndrome, the localized type, or the acros, uh, the limited cutaneous scleroderma, or the acrosclerosis. It is called Crest syndrome. Calcinosis, Raynaud's phenomena, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyly, and telangiectasia. Also here the, uh, about the systemic type, the, the criteria and diagnostic criteria. There is one major and two minor criteria. The major criteria is proximal or truncal fibrosis. And the minor criteria is, uh, includes the uh, sclerodactyly, pitting scars, pulp loss, and by basilar pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, skin sclerosis, telangiectasia, and Raynaud's phenomena. To the left, the pictures. There is the skin sclerosis we can see in the uh, uh, hands and face, with the special faces of constricted uh, mouth and uh, pinched nose. And there is to the right the uh, radial furrowing and the telangiectasia, of course. And we can see here also the, uh, the hands has Raynaud's phenomena and sometimes there is ulceration of uh, the tips of fingers and sometimes there is calcinosis. And In the systemic scleroderma, there is the scleroderma 70 antibodies. The ANA antinuclear antibody in the limited disease is speckled, in the diffuse disease it is clumpy, and in uh, scleroderma polymyositis overlap syndrome it is homogeneous. The histopathology of uh, systemic uh, scleroderma and also the localized amorphia are almost the same. Uh, in the early stage, there is or inflammatory stage, there is mostly lymphocytic infiltration in the lower derms and subcutaneous fat. Later they are uh, replaced with newly formed collagen and there is thickened tropically of subcutaneous fat and there is some uh, increased number of mast cells. Later in the sclerotic stage there is the collagen and the inflammatory infiltrate of course disappear and replaced by collagen which is thick and closely packed hyalinized with few fibroblasts, and we can see the, the eccrine glands are atrophic and tightly bound down to the uh, newly formed collagen. This is a diagram, and here we see what we're talking about. For the morphia, here there is uh, the inf uh, inflammatory infiltrate, the lymphocytes, in the morphia case, and we see here the dense collagen bundles with the uh, bound down sweat glands.
the same here also you can see early the, there is the inflammatory infiltrate patches and there is the Opache inflammatory infiltrate and the, uh, later there is the collagen abundance. There is a note here, the laboratory abnormalities, usually investigations for systemic scleroderma is usually negative, xenophilia may occur. Uh, there is sometimes positive ANA in 40%, especially the linear type, anti-single strand DNA, especially more in generalized than linear than localized. The antihistone antibodies sometimes in, uh, generalize more than the linear, more than the localized. And also there is a, a serum propeptide type 1, carboxy terminal propeptide. It is in more than in the generalized than the localized. This, incl uh, this indicates disease activity. Now for the immune, uh, immune modulators especially, uh, in my sites and uh, interstitial lung disease, uh, prednisolone and uh, so, uh, cyclophosphamide, azathioprine, cyclosporin, extracorporeal chemotherapy, photochemotherapy, and plasmapheresis, interferon gamma, anti thymocyte uh, globulin. And also, there is the uh, anti fibrotic agents like D penicillamine. Uh, cyclophenyl, colchicine, graziofulvin, and isotretinoin. Uh, they are all aimed for decreased collagen. And uh, there is also surgical, topical, and other modes of treatment like antipostemic antibiotics and H2 blockers, uh, topical uh, antibiotics and topical antipyretics, and also surgical like sympathectomy, uh, mechanical dilatation and debulking uh, for uh, large symptomatic deposits of cutaneous calcinosis. Uh, I'll go back to the immune modulators where we can give prednisolone as an anti-inflammatory and decreased collagen synthesis uh, in 5 to 10 mg daily for uh, per os and cyclophosphamide 2 to 4 mg per kilogram per day per os. This is immunosuppressive and cytotoxic agent. As a thioprene, uh, 1 to 2 mg per kilogram per os immunosuppressive cyclotoxic and cyclosporin 2.5 mg per kilogram per day per os in, uh, influence uh, early phase of immune response by decreasing sensitivity and release of interleukin-2 from T helper cells and uh, to a lesser extent interleukin-1 which regulate fibroblast proliferation and induce fibrosis. The, uh, again, the antifibrotic agents, the D-penicillamine, influence collagen metabolism and immune suppression. The cyclophenyl decreases collagen senses by fibroblast uh, uh, in vitro. And there is the colchicine, which interfere with microtubule-mediated transport and increase collagenase production. The graziofulvin decreases proliferation of fibroblasts, and the isotretinoin decreases collagen senses. So the treatment of uh, scleroderma is uh, against the three uh, patho pathogenesis like the, uh, the vasoactive agents, especially in uh, Raynaud's phenomenon and scars, and also immune modulators, especially in myocytes and interstitial lung fibrosis and antifibrotic, uh, antifibrotic agents and surgical, topical, and other modes of uh, treatments. This is the scleroderma. The last, there is a note in the pathogenesis. Actually, I'd like to say before closing, the disturbed control of collagen metabol uh, the the role sorry the role of uh, oxygen free radicals in aggregation and RBCs and increased fibrinolytic activity. Uh, and uh, stanozolol 10 mg per day per os, increased endothelial activator, uh, uh, activator of uh, plasminogen leads to increased fibrin license, and lymphidipen 30 mg per day per os also uh, leads to uh, vascular uh, mu uh, mucous membrane uh, relaxation and leading to uh, re release of the vasospasm. Uh, the captopril uh, in the dose of 150 mg per day per os uh, ACE inhibitor and the uh, ketanserine of 60 uh, mg per day per os. Uh, 
for the treatment of scleroderma, the, uh, the same as the pathogenesis. The aim is the same as the pathogenesis, as we can see. The three things, vasoconstrictive agents, and immune modulators and antifibrotic agents. The vasoconstrictive agents examples are prostacyclin, prostaglandin, PE, uh, prostaglandin E2, transdermal or intravenous, dextran, stanozolol, nifedipen, captopril, and ketanserine. The prostaglandin, 2.5 mg per kilogram per minute in 78 hours intravenously, decreased platelet aggregation and vasodilatation. Prostaglandin E2 transdermal and intravenous, treatment of Raynaud's phenomena. Dextran, low molecular weight. The pathogenesis of systemic scleroderma, uh, the initial effect, effect, uh, events of the disease in the pathogenesis of scleroderma is either autoimmune process or a toxic substance, unusual reaction to a chemical, either autoimmune or toxic substance. So uh, there are three pathways. The, the also, there is the early scleroderma and the fibrosis stage. We will talk about the early scleroderma first. There is three pathways. The uh, vascular alteration, abnormal immune regulation, and Disturbed control of collagen metabolism. Three pathways, vascular alteration, abnormal immune regulation, and dis uh, disturbed control of collagen metabolism. The vascular alteration, we can see, there is. First, there is in, uh, endothelial cell injury, leads to proliferation of intimal cells, obliteration, ischemia, platelet aggregation, release of active mediators, and modulation of fibroblast function, uh, function leading to altered permeability of vessel wall, leading to release of mononuclear cells into the tissues to the perivascular uh, space, leading to uh, uh, perivascular infiltrates. This is the vascular alteration. Endothelial cell injury, proliferation, obliteration, ischemia, platelet aggregation, release of active mediator, mod modulation of fibroblast, altered permeability of vessel wall, mononuclear cells in and perivascular infiltrate. The second thing is abnormal immune regulation. This is in the T helper cells, increased activity, and the B also uh, cells, with autoantibodies, development of autoantibodies against both nuclear and cell cellular antigens. The third pathway is disturbed control of collagen metabolism. This is in the early scleroderma. What about the fibrotic stage? The fibrosis, there is also, uh, it results in, uh, from an interplay between first recruitment of lymphocytes and monocytes, activation of fibroblasts, and role of mast cell. Recruitment of lymphocytes and monocytes. Lymphocytes, of course, there is T cell activation and B cell activation, as you said. T cell activation, release of interleukin 2 and 5, and transforming growth factor B. B cell activation leads to release of antibodies, anti-scleroderma 70 and anti-centromere antibody, and about monocyte activation, releasing fibronectin and interleukin 1. The fibronectin, which is fibroblast chemotactic factor, and interleukin 1, fibroblast growth stimulating monokines. Also, there is transforming growth factor B and tumor necrosis factor. The second thing is activation of fibroblasts. Activation of fibroblasts occurs. There is stimulation of selective population of fibroblasts, especially in the lower derms, leading to collagen synthesis, increased collagen synthesis, especially type 1 and type 3 collagen. Due to stimulation of T helper cells, as we said, leading to collagen stimulatory lymphokines. And also there is defective inhibitory feedback by aminopeptides of type 1 and type 3 collagen fibrils. The role of mast cell increased number of mast cells which is 
uh, in early inflammatory stage, secondary, as we said, to interleukin-5, released by activated T helper cells, the mast cell release proteases and hist uh, histamine and other mediators that leads to endothelial cytotoxicity, increased fibroblast. Uh, of course, the proteases leads to endothelial cytotoxicity and the histamines leads to increased fibroblast proliferation. This leads both to